In this Webflow Interaction Crash Course, we'll cover the foundations of how they work and the main types of interactions you would create on a site. If you'd like to follow along, I'll leave the clonable in the description below. Let's get started. The first key to any good interaction is getting the structure set right. We want each image to start in the middle of its own link. So with the image selected, let's switch it to position absolute, and we need to set what it should be absolute to. So if it's parent, the link selected, we'll switch that to position relative so it contains its image. Then to get it in the center, with the link selected, we'll apply flex, align, and justify center. Whenever we hover into one of these links, we want our interaction to play. So these links are our trigger for the interaction. If we head to interactions, we can trigger an animation when an action happens on the entire page or on an individual element. In this case, we'll say whenever we mouse hover over one of our product links. And instead of just having this interaction happen on the single product link element, we'll apply it to the class so it applies to any product link across the whole page. Whenever we hover into this link, we can choose a predefined animation Webflow has here or create our own. We'll create one here and we'll call this link hover in. Next, let's select the element we'd like to animate, this image, and we'll add an action to animate its opacity. This part defines the relationship between the trigger, the link we hovered over, and the element we're animating, the image. This says only children with this class, so we're only animating images that are inside of the link we hovered over. We could switch this to all elements with this class, so any link we hover over would animate all product images across the page. Webflow does its best to try to define this for you. So if we were to add an action to this product list here, you'll notice it says only parents with this class. Instead of animating every product list across our page, it will only animate one that's a parent of the link we hovered over. And if we were to select the link we hovered over and add an action to that, it's gonna say the interaction trigger. So only animate the link we hovered over itself. Or if we were to grab a different link and add an action, this says only siblings with this class. So don't animate the link we hovered over, but animate all of its siblings. Siblings are elements that share the same parent. So in this case, we're going to select the image inside of the link we hovered over and add an opacity to this turn it down to 0% and have a duration of 0 seconds. So instantly when we hover in, the opacity will be 0. Then we can add a step that happens after this opacity 0 by clicking here or clicking here. We're going to add an opacity 100 after this. So it'll fade from 0 to 100% opacity over a 0.5 second duration. So if we preview this, each time we hover into our link, our image fades from 0 to 100% opacity. But what if we wanted these images to be hidden on page load? We could check this first step here as an initial state. Initial states run once on page load, but they don't run each time our interaction plays. So if we preview that, all our images are hidden on page load, and when we hover in, it sort of plays, and each time we hover, it's fading to 100% opacity, but it's not fading from that zero because the 0% only ran once on page load. So sometimes you'll need both an initial state and a regular non-initial state that just happens every time we hover in. That way the images are hidden on page load. And also each time we hover in, they fade from zero to 100% opacity. Now with initial states, they always take a couple like milliseconds to kick in. This causes sort of a flash where we see the content before the initial state kicks in and hides our images. So for that reason, I like to avoid using initial states as much as possible so we can delete our initial state. And instead, we can just set the default style of these product images in the style panel to be 0% opacity. So they're all hidden by default. And if we select one of these links, we can head back to our interaction for it and open our hover in. So whenever we hover off of this link, we'll return the image back to zero opacity. So we don't need this zero opacity on hover in because we'll handle that in the hover out. So here we're animating our image to full opacity. We're also gonna wanna animate the sibling links to a transparent opacity. So we can grab any of these other links. We can have it happen after the opacity, or if we click off to this side, we can have it happen with the image opacity. We'll have the sibling links here animate to something like 30% opacity. 
If we want to affect the duration and ease together, we can hold shift and click on any other steps. And now we can set them both to 0.6 duration and a simple ease like out sign. So if we preview, now anytime we hover a link, its siblings gray out and the image inside of it fades up. Now we just need to set up our hover out. So if we save this, I like to just duplicate the hover in instead of starting from scratch. We can click on this new duplicate for on hover out and we'll rename this to be hover out. And that way all we need to do is select this image, turn its opacity down to zero and grab the sibling links, turn them back to 100%. And that way for any link we hover over and whenever we hover out, we reveal the siblings again. Since there's no such thing as a hover on mobile, we can open our interaction and make sure it only runs on desktop. So we'll uncheck tablet and mobile devices. Then when we head to our mobile breakpoint here, we can grab our images and we'll switch them back to position relative so they're no longer overlapping our text and we'll turn them back to full opacity so we can see them all again. Just for now, I'll set these images to full opacity so we can see them. And whenever we're hovering over this link, we don't want the image to be counted as that because it's kind of sticking out past the link. So I'll set these images to events none, that way they're not clickable and they don't get in the way of us hovering between links. So with the link selected, let's head to interactions and there's two types of animations we can create in Webflow. Ones that animate at a duration we define and then they stop and animations that can be scrubbed by the user, either by moving their mouse or scrolling. These are called continuous animations. They're represented by this icon here. And we always have the element trigger versions and also the page trigger versions. So while we're moving our mouse across this link, or while we're moving our mouse across the entire page or scrolling past the whole page. In this case, we'll do an element trigger of while moving mouse over element um, for this link. We'll apply it to class so it affects any of these links and we'll make sure it only runs on desktop since it's a hover and we'll create an animation right here. So what we're gonna do is select this image inside of the link and we'll add this point to this X action here. So we'll add a move. So this first point is when our cursor is all the way at the left of the link. This last point is when our cursor is all the way at the right of the link. So here, when we're at the left, we want to move this image on the X axis to negative 100% of its own width. So it lines up perfectly there. And then here, when we're at the right of the link, we'll move it to positive 100% of its own width. So if we preview that, our image slides from edge to edge but maybe we want it to overshoot just a little bit. So maybe we'll do negative 150% of its own width and go to positive 150% of its width. And that way on each side, it kind of can go past the parent a little bit. We also might want to move it up and down, which is what this Y action is doing here. The start is when our cursor is at the top of the link, end is when our cursor is at bottom of link. So we can just add a move action to that. And we'll animate this image on the Y axis now, negative 20% of its own height, since the image is kind of tall. And down here, it'll be to positive 20% of its own height. And that way, if we preview this, it's kind of following our, our cursor around in all directions while we're hovering over this link. As soon as we hover out, it pops back to the center. Now we can define where it pops back to. So we could say maybe start all the way here on the X when we hover out so that it's resting right there and maybe all the way down on the Y. So it's resting at the left and the bottom. So if we were to preview this now, see notice when we hover out, the image slides back to the left bottom because we define that as the default resting state. But for now, we'll leave the default set to center 50-50. Now for this smoothing, if we have the smoothing all the way down to zero, that image is gonna directly follow our cursor. It's never gonna lag behind the cursor. The higher we bump this number up, the more smooth the effect can feel. So now it feels like that image is really trailing behind our cursor and has a good bit of weight to it. So I'll do something like 92 in this case. And I'll go ahead and set the images back to zero opacity. So we're not seeing any of them on page load and we have a hover in interaction that's showing the image and now a mouse move interaction that's making the image follow our cursor. So next we might want this nav to hide whenever we scroll down and reveal whenever we scroll back up. To do that, we'll wanna make sure the nav is set to fixed or sticky, zero pixels off the top, so it's staying with us while we scroll. And to do this, we'll create a page trigger 
and it'll be page scrolled. So it detects if the page is scrolled up or down. This can apply across every breakpoint. Whenever the page is scrolled up, we'll create a new action here called scroll up. So whenever we scroll back up, we want the nav to be revealed. With the nav selected, we'll add a move to it that moves it on the Y axis to 0%. So, and we'll make sure this affects class. So it slides back down to its default resting state. And whenever we scroll down, we want to hide the nav. So we'll create a scroll down action here. I'll duplicate this scroll up and we'll call this one scroll down. And here we're going to move the nav up to negative 100% of its own height. So it slides completely out of view like so. And if we go ahead and save this and preview, whenever we scroll down even just a little, the nav slides out the way. When we scroll up a little, the nav comes back into view. Now, the thing with any sort of page trigger is it only applies to the page we created it on. If we wanted this on other pages, like our about page, we'd have to manually go to that page, link it to the page scroll, and link it to up and to the down version. So it's best to set up all the page triggers that you could want inside your home page first. Make sure that's all good before you create any other pages. And that way we can just duplicate the home page and all those page trigger interactions will transfer over with it. So let's create another page trigger for this little progress bar. We'll animate it to fill up the space while we're scrolling down the page. To do that, we'll create a page trigger of while the page is scrolling. We'll go ahead and start an animation here and we'll call this something like progress. So once we have that set, we'll click on the progress bar. We'll go ahead and set a size on it and we'll make sure it affects the class. So it's going to animate from a width of 0% to a width of 100% while we scroll down the page. So it's filling up all of its parent and our start points when we're at the very top of the page, the end point is when we're at the very bottom and that progress bar is just filling up the space all the way through. We could offset this a little bit so it ends a little bit before we get to the bottom of the page if we want but that's all set there. And we can even adjust the smoothing just like we did with our cursor hover so it kind of lags behind our scroll bar a little bit. So now that we have that set, let's also set up a rotation for this SVG element if we click on this here. For that, we'll create a page trigger of page load and we can choose to have this start when the page starts loading or when the page finishes loading. We want it to start right away, so we'll say when starts loading start an animation here, we'll create a new one and we'll call this spin. With the SVG selected, let's go ahead and create a rotate here and we'll apply this to the class. We'll have it rotate to 360 degrees. So it makes a complete full rotation starting or ending right where it started off. So if we preview that, it makes a full spin here. Now, if we save this, we can check loop so that it should just keep repeating, and it does, but once it gets to 360, we, we never reset it back to zero. So it's keep animating to 360, and it doesn't look like anything's actually happening here um, because we never set it back to zero. So to do that, we can just add another rotate at the very end that sets this back to zero once it's finished spinning, and this can happen instantly, no duration to it. And that way, with the loop selected, we'll notice now it just keeps spinning forever and it never stops and we can just slow this down the rotate to something like 10 seconds and that should be good lastly we might want this image to move on a parallax inside this image wrap while we're scrolling past it so to do that with the image wrap selected let's apply an aspect ratio i'll do 16 by 9 and we'll give this wrap a position relative then we can grab the image inside it and we'll position this absolute to the top of its parent wrap We'll give this 100% width and 100% height for now of its parent, like so. And to make this have a parallax, this image needs to be a bit taller than its wrapper. We can do something like maybe 160% of the height of the image wrap. And then the image wrap can be set to overflow hidden, so it just crops off that excess. Then we'll animate this image element using transforms from 0% on Y to however far it needs to be moved up. Maybe negative, looks like negative 30%, 37% uh, of its own height. So it's going right up to the edge like so. 
So we'll have this happen while we scroll past this image wrap. We'll create an interaction element trigger of while scrolling in view past the wrap. Apply this to the class and we'll start an animation here. We'll call this move image and we'll just select the child image. Apply a move on the Y that goes from 0% to negative 37% of the image's height, like so. And this will happen from the time this image wrap comes into view right past the bottom of the screen, all the way to the time when the image wrap goes out of view past the top of the screen. We have some nice parallax going on here. We can adjust the smoothing freely as we'd like. And we could change the start point if we want it to start when the wrap is fully visible. So when the bottom of the wrap enters past the bottom of the screen. But for parallax like this, it's best to have it start when wrap starts entering and end when wrap is fully invisible. So it's animating the entire time that this wrap is in view. And that looks pretty good. One other little detail we might want to do is just uh, slide this image cover up. So we have this div here that's absolute to the top of the image. We can give it a height of like 100% of its parent by default, so it's covering the image. And whenever we scroll into view, we can have that height animate back down to 0%. So it kind of just reveals the image like so. And so to do that, we we'll want this to happen at a set duration so we're not scrubbing it. Um, we'll grab the image wrap, create an interaction, and with the element selected, it'll be a scroll into view, just so it happens at a set duration. We'll apply this to the class and we'll say when scrolled into view, start an animation called reveal image. We can grab this cover and we'll add an action. This time we're animating size and we'll have it start at 100% width, 100% height, and we'll check this as an initial state. And then we'll add a size here where we animate it to 100% width and 0% height. And we'll do kind of like an out sign ease so it eases out. So if we save this and we preview here, whenever we scroll into view, that cover just kind of slid up. But when we scroll back into view again, it only animated the first time. And that's because while we animated this to 0% height, we never returned it back to full height. And we can't just do that uh, once this is done sliding. We need to wait till the image is completely out of view before we reset that cover. So to do that, we'll create a scroll out of view and we'll just go ahead and create a new one here called cover image. We'll go ahead and select this cover. We'll set a size on it where we reset it back to 100% with 100% height. This can happen instantly, zero second duration since it'll be out of view. And that way this should just animate every time we scroll into view now of this, it should just animate. So that's an overview of how to set up interactions in Webflow.